In this game, you are a predator and M&Ms are your prey. To play, click the green flag to start. The screen will then randomly populate with M&Ms which represent your prey and Skittles which represent poisonous animals that you should avoid clicking on. Try to click on all of the M&Ms to collect them as quickly as possible without accidentally clicking on any of the Skittles. When you're done, the game will stop and it will display your total time along with the number of M&Ms and number of Skittles you selected. To change the difficulty of the game, you can change the number of each color of M&M and the distance that they are spread out. For example, if I change this from 2 to 3 and click the green flag again, you will now see that I have 3 of each color of M&M along with 3 Skittles mixed in, matching a random M&M color, in this case yellow, making it harder to differentiate between the yellow M&Ms and the yellow Skittles. This simulates prey animals that have evolved to match the appearance of a poisonous animal to make predators think twice about trying to eat them. To make the M&Ms closer together or more spread out, you can change this number. For example, if I decrease it to 100 and run the program again, you will see they are more clustered towards the center of the screen, but if I increase it to 170, they will be more spread out. Note that you don't want to increase this number too much or the M&Ms might actually appear off screen or behind some of the variables appearing up here at the top. That's all you need to know if you just want to remix our project and change these variables, but we will also explain a little bit more about how the code works. You will notice that this Scratch program has two sprites, one for the M&Ms and one for the Skittles. Each sprite has different costumes for the different colors. The code for the M&M sprite has a nested loop that creates clones of the sprite. First, it repeats for the number of each color that you want, then it switches to the next costume and repeats a total of six times, once for each color. The code then hides the original sprite and resets the timer. It will then update the timer value until you have clicked on all of the M&Ms, at which point it will stop all of the code. There are two other sections in the code for the M&M sprite. One tells it to go to a random position and then show itself when it starts as a clone. And then we have a block for when this sprite is clicked. We are going to increase the M&M variable by one and delete this clone so it disappears from the stage. The code for the Skittles sprite is similar except that it picks a single random costume instead of iterating through all of the costumes. It then goes to a random position and shows itself for each clone, and when it's clicked, we're going to increase the Skittles variable by one and hide the sprite. So if we watch what happens when I click the green flag to start the program, we see that it will take a second for the M&Ms and Skittles to populate the screen, but the moment that is done, the timer starts counting up. Every time I click on an M&M, it disappears, and the M&M counter increases by one. The same happens if I click on a Skittle, it will disappear and the Skittle counter will also increase by one. Once I have clicked on all of the M&Ms, the program will end and stop the timer, showing me my total score. For a science project, you can get volunteers to try the game and see how variables like the number of each color of M&M, the distance, or the color of the corresponding matching Skittles affect the amount of time it takes them to complete the game. To create a copy of the code or see written instructions for a science project, check out the links in the video description. For over a thousand other fun projects in all areas of science and engineering, check out the rest of our YouTube channel and visit our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.